Should Christians form a Declaration of Independence? The founding fathers of this nation, and let me just say it this way because a lot of people didn't get what I was saying. They don't, they aren't able to listen apparently. When I say founding fathers, I don't mean Thomas Jefferson, Benjamin Franklin, both of which were Freemasons, both of which were deists and, and had a lot of other problems. I'm not talking about those guys. I made that statement in my video, okay? I'm talking about the men, primarily the men who fought in the war of, you know, independence, the, the uh, Revolutionary War, 1776 and all that. Uh, what I'm saying is godly men out there who founded this country, um, they're not to be compared to the modern patriots. But the point is, at what point in time do we as Christians declare our independence from the wicked government? Well, um, I would say pretty much at every time. Uh, we are supposed to submit to laws as long as they are not a terror to good works. And you have to watch out for these church buildings because I've seen this thing for so many years now. These church buildings, they'll do this thing of uh, just submit to the government no matter what. You just do what you're supposed to be told or what they tell you to do. You can see it with the coronavirus thing. They all went right along with it, these churches. And uh, didn't even question most of them. Um, there's a few that say that they didn't go along with it. I question that. I don't know if that's true or not. But, but uh, to make an official declaration of independence, we're now independent and whatever. Well, there's a sense in which we're always supposed to be independent of secular government. They have no right to come in and tell the Church of Jesus Christ what we're supposed to do. And um, But should there be a time when we actually write a declaration, formal declaration of independence? Well, that I can't say. I don't know. I don't know how far this thing will go before the body of Christ is caught up to be with the Lord. And that is Bible doctrine. Again, I see that. Well, that's ridiculous. That's not what the Bible teaches. And Please. Uh, you don't know who you're talking to. I've preached well over 100 sermons on it. Um, I know every argument that the post rivers use. I've been through all of it for years and years and years. That's the strongest thing I know. Um, the rapture issue, pre-trib, post-trib, mid-trib, pre-wrath, all that. I, I know all of that stuff, okay? I'm not being prideful. I'm just saying it's something I've preached on for many years. Uh, you'll never convince me. Um, I know they say, well, the church has always been post-trib little rant here. Uh, you're talking about the Catholic Church because they are the ones that have been post trib uh, So, whatever. I've answered it. If you really are looking for the truth, you can find it. But my point is, at what point in time do we say, okay, now we're independent. We can no longer follow the government and what they're saying. Well, I would say this vaccine thing is really going to separate the true from the false Christians. And your independence, your declaration of independence must start, first and foremost, you don't need a church building to tell you what to do, okay? You don't need some pastor that submits to the government because he's under IRS code section 501c3, which basically censors his speech in exchange for tax exemption. You don't need that, okay? You say, well, Jesus Christ is my pastor. Jesus Christ is my savior. I don't need some man telling me what to do okay that's step number one step number two is you know and you have a personal relationship with jesus christ step number two is you say i don't need the government in my marriage i don't need the government in my health i don't need the government educating my children and you just start to declare more and more independence from the secular government okay see how that works um there doesn't have to be some formal thing with a bunch of people you know getting together and, and whatever um, that can come later, okay? As time goes by, more and more Christians are going to uh, have no other choice but to leave their jobs, leave their homes. Um, that's going to happen. So, uh, independence, a declaration of independence, yeah, it's going to happen. Um, you know, whether or not you want it to happen. And it might just get to a point where Christian groups will have to get together and say, well, let's all move to this area. I'm not saying communal living or anything like that. I'm just saying Christian groups have to get together and say, we declare our independence from the state of whatever state you're in or go to another country or, or whatever. Um, 
those times are coming. And uh, I've been saying this for a long time, and that is I believe that the church is going to come full circle. We're going to go back to the book of Acts. And in the book of Acts, um, yes, Paul talked about being a Roman citizen, but you know what? He did a lot of things that were contrary to the laws of Rome. And uh, a lot of things that were contrary to the laws of, you know, the, the Jewish Sanhedrin and everything, too. And um, you might have to get to that point, brethren, where we just simply say, I can't follow these laws anymore. Uh, the Constitution, if you haven't noticed, is shredded all the time by the politicians. They don't care about the Constitution. Um, to them, it's just a piece of paper. I think it was George W. Bush that said it's a blankety-blank piece of paper. I won't say the word that he used. Um, I'm a Christian. I don't swear. So, <clears throat> But as far as an actual declaration of independence and, and whatever, well, the economy in this country is going to fall apart, as you know, if you can see anything. The economy is falling apart, which means people are going to stop paying their property tax. The system is going to break down. The electrical infrastructure of this country is such that it's really not worth even fixing. It's so outdated. America is going to fall apart at some point in time. Um, possible invasion by China, Russia. There's a lot of different talk about whatever. But the whole point is, it doesn't really matter what happens if you are genuinely born again. Because if you're genuinely born again, well, you can already declare your independence. You can already declare, hey, God will take care of me, whereas God won't take care of the lost. They don't have the same promises that we have as Christians. So, um, making a formal declaration of independence, well, that might just have to come. But you're going to have to be, be able to prepare, uh, not prepare, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, provide, excuse me. My brain doesn't always work so good when it's this cold out. <laughs> but, uh, you're going to have to be able to provide for yourself and um, provide your own food, provide your own transportation. You see, the government has gotten us into this place where they give us driver's license and they give us rights to drive on the roads that we pay for with our taxes. The government says, uh, well, you can live on this land if you pay us tax and whatever else. Well, I understand some of the reason for taxing because you need to you know, pay for road maintenance and whatever else, that's fine. But I don't like having to pay for public school. I don't like that at all. So, uh, there will be some interesting times coming up, and a uh, declaration of independence already needs to be there in your life as a Christian. You already need to say, hey, I'm not going to have anything to do with this system. Um, I'm not going to follow. I'm not going to, to submit to this. Uh, understand, brethren, that Christians for centuries have not gone along with the, the status quo, the political system. They have, they have rebelled against it. That's just a normal thing. You go back to the Old Testament, there you have the midwives, the Hebrew midwives, and Pharaoh says, kill all the male children. And they say, not happening. And they lied to Pharaoh. They actually said, oh, the Hebrew, mid, you know, the Hebrew women, they, they bear children quicker than the Egyptian women. Come on. <laughs> That's not true. And what does God do? God actually builds houses for the Hebrew midwives. He actually blesses them because they lied to Pharaoh. They told him, you know, I mean, they could, they could technically say, well, technically it's not really a lie because they do actually, you know, whatever. But uh, they refused. I mean, well, look at the options. Tell Pharaoh the truth and die or just do what Pharaoh says and kill the, the boys. You can't. So, you know, hey, uh, the government just passed a rule saying that you have to have the vaccine, you know, over in Australia. Uh, it's mandatory now. You have to have the vaccine. No, no, we're not going to do it. And if it comes to a point where you just simply have to say, hey, you know what? I'm independent of you. I'll try to pay my taxes and do whatever else, but I'm independent. And they say, okay, then you can't work. Okay, then I'll have to get something, work at home or whatever else. Well, you can't drive on the road. Okay, then I'll have to walk. It's going to make your life rather inconvenient, but you need to declare your independence is what you need to do. So start today, right? Don't wait for things to get worse. Don't think to yourself, you know, it, I have to say this too. One of the reasons why a, lot, why a lot of Christians were into this whole Donald Trump thing and everything, oh, Trump's our man and everything, because Donald Trump being an actor was making people think that he's pro-Bible, that he's for the scriptures. When you could just look at the guy's life, he's a, he's a pervert. He's an adulterer, fornicator, you know? Very wicked man. Love of money is the root of all evil. Hello. 
uh, patterns his uh, New York City apartment after King Louis the Fourteenth. King Louis the Fourteenth that hates, he hated Christians, French king, persecuted the Waldensians, and that's who Donald Trump wants to emulate with his decor of his apartment in New York City. And you trust the guy? But see, Christians are so anxious for any little chance that, oh, we can fit into the world and the world actually doesn't hate us. The world actually loves us. It's wrong. It's wrong. Uh, we have to be independent, brethren. We have to come out from among them and be separate. Um, so we need to do. So I hope this has been a challenge to you. And uh, start declaring your independence today. And if you actually have to ever write a letter to your government officials and say, I'm independent, I can no longer listen to you, I can no longer submit to you, okay, include scripture. But uh, don't think that you have to do everything legally according to the corrupt laws of this, of this land or the country that you're in. That's going to be it. Thank you for watching.